Quinny, we're back in the building. Episode hey. 36 of the podcast. Good to have you on, sir. How are you doing? Of the podcast. Great, man. Great, man. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Uh, waiting for me today. I, was, I thought that was my echo there. I think it was yours. Um, oh, it's but, mine. Sorry about that. No, that's a good one. Uh, thanks for thanks for the patience and the understanding today, man. It's been absolutely manic. Just a uh, busy, busy morning. We're all sorts of stuff, but yeah, man. Um, buzzing. <laughs> buzzing to get stuck into some of this stuff, boy. I don't even know where to pick up. There's been so much happening this week. Um, I think we're live now. There's probably been a wee bit of chat and whatever going on already. No super yeah. sub. Sorry about that. Um, I had right. a, one lined up, but I don't think we've managed to get the, the paperwork over to the FA in time, you know, to register Deadline appearances yeah, for this game week. So, sorry about that. That's right. What have you been up to this morning? You've been busy, you've been busy buzzing around? Yeah, just recording. Like, I recorded the Celtic podcast this morning and then uh, had the wife in here trying to do a wee bit of... <laughs> We better work as well, which was fun, and uh, and then yeah, just get some other stuff getting made up. Like I've, it, it, as you all know, and this is maybe a small tangent to start the podcast off with, but like, um, short form content is kind of like the, the the place to be the now, as it were, in terms of you know getting eyeballs and getting more people towards your content. Which you know, if you're making content, it's kind of what you want it's more people to see it. So um, yeah, just increased efforts with all that stuff. Basically, it's taking up a lot of time, and I, I kind of went into a rabbit hole. Um, at 11 o'clock and then it took me down some places and then before I knew it, I had messages from you saying, all right, are we still doing this? And I'm like, what the? <laughs> what time is it, man? Oh, Jesus. And I was, uh, anyway, had to clear the place up because the camera was somebody else as well because I'd left that over there from this morning recording with the sales are here. I had to move everything over and get set up. Whatever. So thanks to everyone for their, uh, who, anyone who's joining the live record, thanks for your patience and Stashy Boy, same to you as well, of course. But yeah, oh, so... Good. It's just been all battle stations, mate. Nothing bad or grim or anything like that. It's just been all hands on deck, all hands to the pump. For the sake of anyone listening to this in the future via the podcast, um, before you got here, I was just walking through uh, my Asia selections for my seventy-five dollar uh, budget build that I did um, on the, nice. the the blog that I started, the So Rare Social blog. So um, yeah, we just went through that. We had a little look at some of the players. Um, and do you know what? It's already two dollars um, and sixty cents in profit that selection. So we're nice. we're on the app already. Uh, that's it, man. That's it. But I, I'm going to get into doing a few more of them. I think what it is with the the idea behind the blog for me was there's a lot. You said lots of short form content, lots of people doing lots of stuff. And I think um, there's a, there's quite a few blogs out there, but not as many of them as like super active. What I wanted to do was try and look at the sort of transfer window from a so rare perspective and pick up on the news and then give it a little bit of context around like what some of these signings may mean for so rare and also using the so rare market as a bit of a like sentiment indicator you know if a player's like going to make a move and the price yeah. goes up that's like oh people think this is going to be a good move whereas the price starts going down it's like well the the sentiment is not good among the so rare community so trying to present that to the sort of wider football uh community if you like has been quite interesting i've seen some comments on like reddit like my site is a kind of some kind of bot farming trying to like get my uh, get my affiliate link out there and all that but uh, from the so rare side of things people have been really positive about particularly the really so rare focused stuff so like the the squad builders the like the sort of st statistical markups on some of the current transfers and that so yeah form been well and truly involved in uh, in your world of like digging around, doing a bit of scouting, but trying to like turn it into a bit of content instead of just what's well, normally just me sat in the front room on the laptop, <laughs> keeping it all to myself. But it's yeah. been interesting. You must you must experience this yourself quite a lot. The amount of content you do, but um, sometimes you'll find a gem on these like <laughs> scouting hunts, and you wish you weren't live, or you wish you weren't talking about it in that given moment on that bit of content. So you might finish the bit of content and be like, right, before I send this live, I need to make sure that I buy this person because this person is like and I, a I've, proper I've, gym. Yeah, a couple of times I did like a I did a kind of like U23 uh, scouting session on for the MLS as well. And just looking at some of the sort of end of season, uh, tail end of last season, watching some clips of players reading kind of match reviews, match reports. And uh, yeah, I found myself picking a few cards up this week off the back of my sort of scouting endeavours uh, and I tried to win a few on auctions as well but I managed to pick up a shirt numbered rookie card 
of, uh, of an endless player. So hopefully they do come good. Um, I was having a conversation on the subject of MLS before we get into all the, the news of the new game modes and things that are going on, because there's a lot to get through this week. Yeah. But um, a friend of mine was messaging me today and we were talking about MLS youngsters and he was saying that he's going to stop looking at the under 23 market in MLS specifically. He's like, once you with MLS, you've got sort of two things you have to figure out. One of the good things about buying players from the MLS is you don't have any worry about relegation, which isn't so much of a thing now in the sort of champ Euro either. But MLS, they don't get relegated. But what you do find is a lot of the under 23s that move out of the MLS don't do particularly well once they leave. They find themselves on the bench. You know, like or it, before, it was like a big problem was them going to like second tier Bundesliga, which maybe is not a big problem these days. But we were trying to think of examples of players who've left the MLS under 23 and have done really well. And I think that like, you know, maybe like Pepe has started to come on a little bit now. Um, but beyond that, he made a good point. And I thought, you know, you get a good season out of a really hot MLS youngster and then they make a move sometimes a bit too early. Um, I mean, Bellow's not been bad either. He's been pretty good. Um I think the data on on that but is um is decreasing in quality. So I think like a lot so a lot of the MLS under twenty threes that we've seen on so rare times move from MLS to Challenger, Champ Euro and whatever. Like Pepe, Bello, Mark McKenzie, Buchanan. Aronson, Buchanan. A lot of them are domestic. For the large part, you know, there's not too many. Like Tiago Almada is probably one of the biggest ones. He's still in America. Tati really struggled to make a big move and ended up getting a crappy loan move in the end. Uh, Magno obviously hasn't left yet. Brenner's yet to move. So I think, like, I, I think it's all in context of the person. I think maybe the MLS under 23, you know, American Canadian prospect. There's probably a really solid argument to have there. Maybe Jesus Ferreira would become an outlier alongside mm -hmm. Brendan Aronson. And then the norm is a Bello, a Pepe, a McKenzie, who's just in and out on loan spells in favour with different clubs and managers and whatever. But I do think we will see... You know, let's see what happens with Tati. But then I do think beyond that, there is players like Almada, uh, like Facundo Torres, like mm -hmm. Magno, that, you know, let's see where... Let's see their careers... And then see what the DP U23 talent and MLS can do on translation. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see. I think after doing a bit of digging, I got quite excited for watching some of these young players. And uh, so the one I picked up was Nico uh, Sekiris, who is at the Earthquakes. Nice. Um, and I hadn't heard much about him. It was a name that came came up in conversation when I was like discussing like who we should be watching for next season. And a couple of people mentioned him. And then I did some digging and I thought he isn't a player who I'd watched, I wasn't aware of. And it's because he wasn't really used that much until right at the tail end of the season. And in the games that he did play, he was quite lively. Like more than quite, he was really lively. He, you know, if you watched the Leon game yesterday, I was waiting for Cherky to come on because I, I was doing so well in under 23. I was like, when Cherky I saw him start, I was shocked. And... Leon were toothless until he came on and he did. He kind of created a bit of a spark and, you know, got a couple of shots on goal himself, one blocked, one saved. Uh, and watching uh, Nico Sakiris was a bit like that. He he seemed to be the creative force for, for the Earthquakes who, you know, aren't a fantastic side. But no, the, ML, the one thing about MLS is it's pretty end-to-end, -end, isn't it? No one really kind of comes... You find it's not like you don't watch like many nil nils in the MLS, do you? You don't see many no. nil nils. So um, hopefully, hopefully that one comes good for me. But he was one of the sort of like scouting bits that I did in the week. Um, but yeah, have you met any pickups for you this week, Quinny? Have you been in the market? Oh, good question. I don't think so. I'm not even sure if I've got Surair open yet. That's how arse to elbow I am today. Um, no, I need to log in. I don't think so, Stish. Um, I think since getting that super rare goalkeeper equation rebalanced, I've been quite happy to... I've been trying to get in like some rotation pieces. Uh, so I was also having a wee look at a Bernabe just because um, Taylor's out injured for a few weeks. And prior to all the announcement stuff and all the new game modes that I'm sure we'll come on to talk about, I've actively been seeking out a La Liga super rare defender just to kind of fill my compliment out of La Liga mm -hmm. cards I've got one defender 
I could use a second. I could probably use another forward also, but forwards and defenders are priced very differently. Uh, so I'll start with the defender first and then think about a forward later on. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I've made any headway in those directions. I've obviously I had the little... Um, so I actually failed in my endeavour to get a super rare La Liga defender in, and I ended up buying a rare of a guy I would like to have as a super rare just to help a team be a bit better in the yeah. weekend game week. And that was Javier Galan, a Celta Vigo. He plays left back. He's 27. Um, and, you know, he helped the team get to Big Eef, but wasn't anything uh, otherwise. And, yeah, otherwise the gallery is is unchanged. I'm just kind of waiting for... We've had one or two game weeks where everything's played, but now uh, I know with the Scottish fixtures over the next week or two, Celtic are going to miss the next two weekends uh, oh. on SO5. Yeah, because we've got a cup semi-final this weekend, and then we've got a cup game the following Saturday against Greenock Morton. Uh, so no SO5 two weekends in a row for Celtic cards. We've got midweeks around that, which is cool. But for galleries like mine, and for me specifically, because it's me talking on the podcast, <laughs> I'm waiting a few weeks before I'm going to get everything back together fighting at full power as it was. So I'm going into a couple of weeks where I know I need to pick my battles and maybe just take take a few on the chin, you know, if I've not yeah. got all the cards I want playing, and rather than chasing a guy to fill a team. Oh, yeah, that's quite that's quite nice to hear actually that Celtic aren't going to be there on the the, the weekends because that might that might open Challenger up a little bit more <laughs> at least for yeah. me I might I might be looking at Challenger a little bit more while Celtic are out of the mix um def- and and U twenty three as well I think Celtic have got quite a few big players in in that division as well so yeah I'm I'm actually I'm currently sat fifteenth in U twenty three as what the Chelsea game tonight I think so Kai Havertz is the only one who can like kick me out of the tier one. I'm in the final tier one spot, so if Kit Kai Havertz has a good game tonight, he could he could cost me a tier one. But um, that it'll be sod's law, won't it? If like the one game he does like turn up is the game that knocks me into the tier twos. But yeah, I was I was un, unfortunate. I think if um, if I'd have picked Quentin Merlin instead of Cherky, old Quentin, <laughs> yeah, I would have been. I would have been higher up in the in the table. I don't think I'd have. I don't think I'd have survived the tier zero. I think Enzo Lafi uh, put an end to my my chances of that happening. He had another good game. I'm. Just, he's one of them players I kick myself for not buying. Like, he's been in my watch list forever. And when they started minting his cards, um, I just kept thinking, oh, "I'll pick him up. I'll pick him up." Didn't. Um, for whatever reason, didn't have the ETH balance in the account when it was time for his like you know auctions to come around and now he's he's become one of those u23 unicorns a bit hasn't he especially in the past sort of 10 matches i'd say i don't know what his l5 is but it's got to be close to 70 now surely yeah he's Uh, been an absolute monster and he's a great example of it is difficult sometimes to buy the high ceiling youth prospect when they're not at a big team because The best case scenario is they get into a crap team and then you're thinking, well, realistically, how well can they actually do? And uh, when you see what this guy can do, like <laughs> maybe gives you a wee bit of hope. But it's a yeah. really hard card to motivate yourself into if it's if you don't need to but you know, if you if you are literally not at your wits' end for like I literally need nothing else in my gallery right now. Let me just buy this for the you know, to be the frivolous thing, or whatever. the thing with like said, players like him as well, like in the teams that they're in. They're one. They're one move away from like their price just absolutely fought crashing. Like if if news broke today that Everton were in for him or something like that, he'd you know you'd be like like maybe not Everton because they probably make use of him. But if he moved to like Chelsea or something like that, and you're like, well, he's just going to sit on the bench, or even like an Arsenal where he's going to be rotated a lot, or or even like you know like a PSG where he would just become a squad player because they buy everyone who's good in the league. Like, well, I was going to say, what about Leon or Lille? They could be good landing spots for him. Yeah, yeah. Like after watching Leon last night, definitely, I think that they lack a lot of creativity. And the thing about Lafie is he sits a lot deeper than um, a lot of the creative options that they've got. Like Tete, he's a wee bulldog type, isn't he? Yeah, he, he's he is he's like he's like another Enzo, isn't he? It's like funny they've got the same name, but he <laughs> he's creative, but he sits a bit deeper. Um, I like him a lot. I think he's a great player. And uh, yeah, he kind of like ruined my my Wednesday evening last night, but I was expecting it to happen. So when when the games were all finished, I think at the time before the PSG game kicked off, I think I was like second or third. And within two minutes, I think Eka TK scored for uh, PSG and I was knocked out of the podium places straight away. Um, it's just like, 
become apparent that I was going to drop quite a few. So the fact that I'm still in tier one, I'm fingers crossed. I think the lowest I can finish is 18th, but that the, the players that can can leapfrog me all have Havertz. So um, I think I think he needs to score a 60 to knock me down. So he needs a decisive, really. Because with that, that decisive, he doesn't often do very much, does he? So if he doesn't score, I think I'll be all right. If he does, I may well find myself in the tier two pool. But um, fingers crossed. I haven't had a tier one or up above win for a little while. It feels like I've been, I've been, I've been really quiet the last few weeks. So yeah, quite excited. Um, quite excited for that. Yeah, um, it was. It's mainly been super rares. I've won. I've won, I've won a few rares recently. Um, but it's been like tier twos in the leaks. And uh, I say I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for everything to come into into full power. But one part of all this it, um, for this game week this year kind of segues into current events as it was for this week. We've got the La Liga draft now. I watch probably more La Liga than anyone I talk to. I think like anyone I actually talk to. So. As soon as this came out, I was buzzing for it. It's like, here we go, man. I've got a good idea of who's crap and who's good. And I've been looking at some players anyway because I've been scouting. Do you know, because it's really weird because right before this happened, like, because I've got that Soria goalkeeper and the misery I had with all the other super rare goalkeepers, I thought, I'm just going to make sure I've, at the very worst, always got some sort of La Liga spine to let those super rares because then that goalkeeper, he's nailed for me the now. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I've only got my fail. I've got Jan Kuto at Girona as well, but both of them are quite flaky. So anyway, I, I've been kind of shopping around La Liga anyway for from a lot of different clubs because I'm looking for cheap ones anyway. So as soon as this draft opened, it felt like um, music to my ears. Now, as I look at it, Stish, I've been told as well by people that they've updated it and some players are now no longer available in the draft. Oh, why? Um, like Griezmann and stuff like that. I think they weren't meant to be there in the first place because they're meant to be L15 under 55. What? Some players are L15. If you read the full release for the beta test, all the cards eligible are meant to be L15 under 55 or something like that. Oh. And uh, everyone is minimum L15 40. Um, that's the range of all the players kind of idea. So I managed to get in Griezmann and I think Borja Mayoral has also been dropped from it. He takes penalties for Getafe and is like one of the main strikers but who now. So what happens I managed to get both of them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happens if you've already selected Griezmann? Because I've actually got him as my captain. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'm not touching it again. I'm not going back. I'm not. So what, if we don't touch it, he he's still good. Or I think is it so. like the World Cup when as soon as you touch it, you lose all those points or whatever, and then you have to rebuy him at the new price. No, it's just that he's not even there. He's not even eligible. You need to wait for his L15 to come down right. before he'd be eligible. Because so it's do you think like... that we're just going to be kicked out of the uh, the 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 La Liga draft. No, they're not going to kick us out, eh? They'll just let the Griezmann fly. That's what I hope. You reckon? I hope so, oh, man. Find that, find that soon, I'm sure. There is only 200 cards, and Alex um, called me out on Twitter after I'd done the, the unboxing video for it. I don't think the rewards are that great. It oh. is a beta test. I totally get the rewards for this could be and probably would be zero in many other universes other than this one. So I totally get that it's something for nothing. No one expected that or whatever, but... Um, I did say on that video that I fancy myself to win. And I think if I put myself in a position where <laughs> I look like I'm winning, then uh, I'm not going to want to alter that. <laughs> Who's in your team? Can you, can you, can you? So my five, I'll what tell you my team? draft, right? So I'll give you this five and then the three extras or the four extras that I picked or whatever. So my team is Jan Oblak in goals. Here's this Navas in defence. Uh, Bryce Mendes in midfield, shot corner. Uh, Borja Mayoral up front with Antoine Griezmann up front as captain and then the rest of my squad I filled out with uh, oh I've hidden in the comments sorry I need to bring them back on screen sorry two seconds but it was Hugo Guillemon in defence I think David Silva in midfield and then the other goalkeeper was Bono of Seville I'm pretty sure that was my eight yeah I, I've got Bono so you've got quite a few players similar to me then so I've got my team is let me have a go to the actual team. So my team, I've got Oblak in goal. Nice. Um, I've got Jene Dakanam at the back, Getafe. Uh, Copet at the back, Mallorca. Nice. Um, Zubamendi, Sociedad, and then Griezmann up top, captain. And then my spare pieces are um, Bono as my my sub goalkeeper, um, Alex Bayena. Um, and oh, yeah, it yeah. looks like, oh yeah, no, he's still in there. Benzema, 
as well, who obviously doesn't have a fixture this week. But I was trying to figure out, do I just like not bring in any? But this was the problem I had with the World Cup one was I was just looking at teams that I thought would go through, um, thinking, oh, you know, like I'll win this, that and the other. Didn't win this, that or the other and was just left without all of those cards that everyone needed to like yeah. progress. So if, if I don't pick Benzema up now and then don't use get him, then I'm going to be stuck without him. And yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it? Because I think Barcelona don't have a fixture. Real Madrid don't have a fixture. So Atletico Madrid, Madrid was like the power play for week one, I think. So I bet a I lot think... of people got Griezmann and Oblak before they got booted off, whatever. Yeah, so the things I found kind of interesting about it is I only expect that it's going to run through the month of January because it's just a beta test and then I'm going to take the cards off and then maybe they do a, another test after this or whatever. So I just looked at it from now to the end of January and Real Madrid have got two non-La Liga games. They've got two Super Cup matches. One or They've got a semi-final with Valencia or something like that, I think, and they've got a match with Barca. I forget exactly. but So Real Madrid don't actually play much in January. SO5, I think they only play one game. Um... And in that mode as well, you can only pick two players from the same team. So you can't get more than a pair right. from a team. So what I, the way I ended up, because I had to heavily edit that video down because I was sitting on that for about an hour trying to work out fixtures and stuff. But um, I thought this would be a, a, probably a better place to share most of it. But what I noticed is over the month of January, Sociedad, Seville, Atletico Madrid, and maybe there's a case for Valencia, but I deemed them four teams to have the best fixtures in January. And then I just set about getting like two players from kind of each, if you know what I mean. Now, Borja Mayoral comes in from Getafe just because he's like a penalty taken forward. It's good for assists as well. Um, so that's why there's no like Valencia. I've got uh, Hugo Guillamon as a defender. He's got mm. a really good L15 average, will play all the time, plays midfield. So uh, and his scores are improving uh, under Gattuso. So, He's maybe a good wee cheap piece to throw in the back on the bench or something. But uh, so I thought that was the main. I thought that was the main kind of way to play it. Is just think about it as being January and try and optimize. You can't optimize more than two players to a club. You need eight players. So try and find four teams that don't play each other or don't too many times or something, you know, and try and just run them for that kind of couple of weeks. That was kind of my thinking. Oh, yeah. So someone in the chat, Rascal Misaki, says. That Griezmann is in the draft. It might have just been a bug that he wasn't showing. He's back in there again now. Oh, and they, cool. th they think that the L15 under 55 might have been for the kickoff and not for the uh, oh, okay. the draft. Cool. I'm still not redrafting in case this is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm not. You, got you, 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 put, you put the scares on me now, so I'm going to leave him there as well. I made that mistake with the World Cup one and there's price changing and stuff like that. So I'm not going to do that again. Um, do you think... if it, I mean, if this has been announced already and I missed it, but... Um, do you think we will see collectible, uh, non-usable, but like tradable only collectibles awarded in La Liga the way that we did with the World Cup? Do you think that's something that we might see coming? I think I missed it in the medium thing, but I'm sure I've seen uh, on Twitter or somewhere, but they are doing like tickets in this in this beta test. They're going to give away tickets. They're going to give away jerseys, I believe. Might not be the beta. Might be the full version after the I beta. I know they're doing that in the Serie A special. That is another thing that's happening this week. We'll get uh -huh. into that in a minute, but whether or not they're doing it with this one, I didn't see that. I'm going to get the media, the media. Maybe mark. that's where I'm getting my wires crossed. But I, I don't. I just thought that was something that is going to happen. I wouldn't rule out there being special edition cards because the last time we had them, I think they were for La Liga in terms of the ticket giveaway, and they are long overdue doing some special editions. So I'm not really expecting it, especially if they were to be non-tradable national series esque. I don't think they will be that. I think national series kind of ticks a box and it will sit by itself now until the next international tournament. Yeah. Um. I yeah. don't really see it. unless there's maybe like I don't know if they want to do like a team of the year style thing and maybe there's a what, what was it? custom series how many what was custom the issue on them again 3,000 2022 of each player didn't they there was 2022 yeah so do they do 2023 issues of the FIFA world team of the year possibly possibly I mean if, I've just got the medium article up and there is no mention of any collectible card giveaways there are limited cards for the top 200 people and um, but they are actual limiteds they're not like untradeable unusable that like you you can win usable cards in during the beta but it doesn't, it doesn't mention anything about what might happen after the beta testing's done so um what you were saying about tickets and jerseys i think that is for the Serie R special weekly kind of cop vibe that's going on this this week um 
yeah, I didn't, do you know, it's right at the bottom as well of the kind of game week, um, right next to the training. When you scroll all the way back down, you've got Siri R Challenge um, in limited and in rare. And in rare. Um, yep. I'm just having a quick look at it now just to see um, what the details are. So you can use, in the rare, you can use rares, super rares and uniques. And obviously in limited is just limited. Um, um, and yeah, there's prizes to be won there. And I think that they do include tickets, jerseys, that kind of thing. 150 limited cards, 50 rare cards. There's only 200 entries at the moment in that Serie R Challenge Pro. I don't think I have a goalkeeper that would be eligible for that. I don't think I have a Serie R goalkeeper, so I can't enter it. But um, I'm just looking now. at my. I, I'm sure I've got some good options in the rest of the positions, but I'm just lacking a, a goalkeeper. Yeah, I've got quite a few there. So I could have put a team about together. This recently somewhere, but like City has a difficult league to really build. There's not that much like youth exciting talent in it, you know, mm. and it is quite a top heavy division for the big scorers, unless you've got like a team talisman like De La Faye or something like that knocking around. Yeah. So it's quite a hard league, I think, for the average manager to have like a squad of by chance, you know, versus like Germany or France or Spain or something yeah. like that, Belgium. Yeah, I, I was just thinking to myself then, oh, I could enter like a team that doesn't have a goalkeeper and see how it gets on. But uh, obviously, you, you can't even fill the gap with, and you need you, you need one that's even not playing. So are you going to go out and buy a rare goalkeeper just to fill a gap there? Probably not. Um, I suppose it depends on how strong the sort of out of four outfielders you've got left over that might just go into training are otherwise worth. But... But yeah, I don't think I'm going to be getting anywhere near the Serie A challenge. I don't think I have a limited Serie A goalkeeper either. Let me try and register. I completely overlooked it, to be honest. Um, it is quite, I guess that's one thing you could say about these announcements is they've come in both at the same time. One might have, you know, the La Liga draft is quite a drastic change from what we've seen before, where we've seen something a little bit like the Serie A challenge before when La Liga launched and we had the tickets and the special cards and stuff like that, which I... I missed that. I think they should do that again, personally. I thought, like, those, like, ticket edition cards that were, like, and and the very special, was it Week 200, Game Week 200 cards as well? Yeah, I think it I, was. I'd, I'd love to see more of that. I don't know about other people on the platform, but, um, you know, the first, I think it was, like, the top 200 people got those cards. So it was quite a nice prize pool in terms of size for, versus, you know, obviously you'd love to win a jersey or tickets to a game, but you need to be in like the top five to 10 players to do that. And again, like I think in, in the global cup, that was great because everyone kind of started at a level playing field. But if you do that in a game mode like this, again, it's going to benefit the old school heads that have got those pieces ready to play. Whereas those kind of ticket weeks, especially when the league are launched, actually, because when you think about it, there weren't actually any, there was a, the odd card on, wasn't there, of players that had moved into La Liga, but there wasn't, apart from a few clubs, it was like Betis and I think we had, we didn't have Barcelona at that point, did we? But there was only a few clubs on the platform, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, Barca came well, in with La Liga. Yeah. After yeah. Messi left it for PSG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, Real Madrid was on the platform. Betis was on the platform. But I think that was it, right? At the time. Valencia. Valencia, yeah, that's right. Athleti. Atletico, yeah. So there was a few, I think that teams, been it. right? But it meant that you know people could buy and get involved. I think that that launched the week that they launched the cards, didn't it? Which kind of worked out quite nicely. But I suppose that we can expect similar. Do you still think you still think the Premier League's coming? Still think it's happening? Yeah. I, I think it's like all this end of January stuff. Like, like I say, everything we've seen so far, like Serie A. League challenge stuff, you know, La Liga league challenge stuff. There's probably going to be Bundesliga stuff next. And again, everyone in their dog is saying it. If you listen to any story or content, everyone thinks that they're going to do a global cup effort to like at not attack as it were, but like to compete against like the FPL equivalent, yeah. you know. Um, so it feels that's the path they're going down. And like, oh, you know, if it walks like a duck, it sounds like a duck and it talks like a duck. It's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you play you FPL know. at all? Do you get involved? Nah. In I opened a team this year because I'm in a chat with uh, Nellis and Hendo and they were talking about it like 
going into the season, and I thought I'll do it for um, for a laugh. I'll go and open it now. I selected like purely Scottish players um, <laughs> or like ex Celtic players, so it's like John McGinn and Edward and Tierney and all that, you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how well I'm doing. Probably not too well. I can't remember the body. You need to be at it every week with the FPL. But like the thing, I think when I first heard about this, that was part of my thing. I was like. I can't see myself putting that much time into like fantasy football. So like it, I can't believe we're still here now, like playing so rare. But the thing with FPL is I I lose interest in it within about three game weeks usually. Um, you, it's very easy to like miss the deadline, which a lot of people would probably say about so rare. But there's just as much, and I and I play in a paid league as well. Like I pay a bit of money every year to enter like a mini league. They sort of sort out uh, like who had the best month. There's like manager of the month award every month based on who scored the most points. But I, it still loses me every season. I, I just lose interest in it. So I think this might be the last year that I get involved in it, um, sadly. But I do like the idea of... It'll be interesting to see how the FPL kind of crew take to a free-to-play so rare version where, you know, you pick your squad, you win players you trade players that kind of thing rather than just being able to everyone just put the same team in every week so it would just re- it would require a bit more strategy i think for sure i've just opened up my team do you know i've maybe had a bit of a master stroke on this and a catastrophic failure at the same time this whole time i've had uh, kieran trippier as captain on this team oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i had super rare obviously um but uh, the rest of the team's absolutely stinking man van dyke's <laughs> So the, it was Areola in goals. I think I just went for the cheapest goalkeeper I could get. Trippier, Robertson, Van Dijk to make up a back three. Midfield are Jaden Sancho, John McGinn, Bakayo Saka and Kevin De Bruyne. And then a front three of Spider-Man Alvarez, Haaland and Odson Edward. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a on the bench with Hickey and Tierney. <laughs> yeah. Nice classic. Oh, I'll find mine in a minute. Where is it? I can't even it's find the app. Absolutely right. Oh, there it is. It's not too bad, but Captain Tier, Captain Trippier. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely picked a few points up of late. I'm sure. I don't think he's scored points. My team's quite got as, <laughs> quite as impressive as his so rare output. But um, yeah, I wonder if I wonder if uh, I wonder if FPL managers would be surprised to see which players top the scoring. Nah, I don't I mean, think they'd Trippier's be too surprised. Probably, Trippier is probably the the best player in the Premier League, right on. Current output, I think. Yeah, I think he's up there for sure. I'm trying not to listen to it too much because I sold mine after a long love affair. I um, know. Yeah, I, I do try. I try not to bring it up every week. Nah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a funny one because I'm not even sore about it because, like, I don't really think like, I know it would have added to teams I've got right, but I don't think I was ever. I'm not getting memories of teams that were missing that by that much. Probably. Like, oh, I needed something. Oh, don't get me wrong. A high scoring player is always going to add to you, but. I don't feel like, um, and I feel like I sold it at a brilliant price as well. Bear in mind, I bought the thing for 20 quid, you know? Yeah. Um, so it makes it a bit easier when I say that. But, but um... <laughs> it's true, yeah. And I do need a La Liga defender, which is what I actually bought him for in the first place. I bought him for his Atletico Madrid form because he was absolutely killing it. Atletico Madrid won the league, you know? Yeah. Um, so I kind of do miss the original. He's lost his with Eddie Howe's Newcastle now, which is a, another story for another day. But, um... <laughs> I've heard your I've heard your thoughts on Eddie Howe on the podcast before. I'll not mistake. I'll I'll save everyone the <laughs> I'll save everyone the, the the dogma as it were. But yeah, so I, in terms of the Prem, like I think like all the signs are pointing towards it being a duck at this point, you know. So yeah, it's just about for me every week now. It's just like waking up. When's it going to happen? When are we going to get another one? You know, another leak or another announcement or something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just about I think like listening to a lot of people. Um, and reading a lot of comments and uh, interactions and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of people kind of like always saying at the same time that they're going to be really excited for the Prem, but they don't want to reveal that they're actually excited to buy cards. Everyone's kind of happy to downplay like, oh, the Premier League isn't that, or oh, the cards mm-hmm. won't be that good. Or, But I promise you, man, like there'll be some players and some teams that people are just going to go mad for that are going to be brilliant cheat codes and capped or U23 or all-star leagues, regions, any manner of tournament that we're, we're going to see over this coming year. And uh, yeah, I, I think you're probably seeing a lot of quiet cam before the storm. Like I'm noticing it with selling cards and buying cards. Like 
you do notice the kind of the wheels of the market kind of sometimes they seize up a little bit or they slow down and sometimes everything's well lubricated and you list a card and you're getting two or three offers in five minutes and you know yeah. tons of stuff's going on also we're talking about different players as well which does change things also but i feel like i feel like some people have got a wallet and they're sitting there and they want to buy a Saka. They want to buy Foden. They want to go after a Sancho because he's on the bench rotting away with DNP scores or I don't even know the situation at the moment, you know. Yeah, but true. Whatever, true. whatever it is you're after. Some people are sitting there with coins just waiting for them to come out and then go shopping. And, um, you know, I started preparing for Celtic cards in the January. Like, just as a pastime, I thought it would be very, um, it would be very irresponsible of me not to start like in my mind at that point this time last year it's like inevitable that these things will happen it's just a matter of when and if you asked me what they came first Celtic or the Prem I probably would have put it in reverse order I would have expected one to happen you know the other way around but by the by I I started thinking at that point I should start saving up so that when McGregor Unique comes out I can go for that yeah as well as some super rares and whatever and you know for every person that was thinking like me for Celtic there was maybe about four or five of us that went after a lot of auctions and still do but you scratch that across so rare, across 180 countries or whatever it is for Man United fans and uh, Man City fans, Chelsea fans, Arsenal fans, um, as well as also we've had Liverpool here for a wee bit already, so they've been kind of satisfied to an extent to this point. Mm. But I think um, it's going to be a mad time. It's going to be brilliant. And I think there's going to be a lot of cards like, like James Ward-Prowse's, for example. There's going to be guys like that that you know, you're going to be really glad you picked up or you're going to be super happy you won them as a tier one or something yeah. like that. I think it just enriches the whole game. And I do feel like market-wise, a lot of people are holding off to get involved in some of them, as well as just seeing what kind of market activity flows thereafter anyway as a consequence of said release at said time. I did notice, a f I was looking at um, a couple of trades recently. I can't remember what, what it was, but on one side of the trade was a card I was looking at and I was trying to figure out like what, that went for because it went as part of a trade i thought well what has that been valued at because it the most recent price didn't really reflect and i noticed that the person who traded for that card whatever it was had traded their harland out for it at the value of about eight and a half and i thought harland's values dropped a little bit in recent which doesn't make sense given his u23 utility and the uh, and the scoring output right yep so that would also suggest that a lot of the big big accounts that hold the likes of a Haaland are thinking Haaland supplies come in eight and a half ETH is not going to be, he's not going to be eight and a half ETH when, you know, they start minting Man City cards or something like that. And it's a bit like my mate, my mate won Pedri right at the end of last season. He won a Pedri rare in underdog nice. and he was like, he needed to sell it because it was worth so much more than the rest of his gallery. And he thought he'd sell it, take some money off the platform, reinvest, to like bolster up his team and we were trying to figure out what price he should get and i think a pedri was like pedri was going between four and a half and five ETH at the time but it was just before the new season cards were coming and i said from experience you know like the offers i was getting on my vehement card pre-season last year where we had off yep. i'd offer of like nine ten ETH, and i was looking for Huge. like i was looking for more i was like he's worth more than you know he'll win me eight ETH in cards next season was my thinking um turned it down and you know i won't get close to that for him now because u23 utility is not there plus as soon as they start minting cards and he goes on the auction people expect to play the last price he went for so obviously pre that vehement had moved to uh psv and they weren't minting him until the next season and i think with pedri the supply was quite low people the last sale was at about five eth but the floor was at like four and a half. He had an offers for four and a half. And I said, like, take it. Because as soon as a Pedri gets minted, his price will come down to like maybe three, two and a half, mm -hmm. three. And that's exactly what happened. I think it went for like about two, 2.2. 2. So my friend managed to sell it, I think, three or four days before Pedri started getting minted. Um, I think that's something you got to bear in mind, especially towards the end of the season as well. Like as soon as the new season cards are minted, that 5% of your bonus goes down as well. So it doesn't look as appealing to people who are buying. They'd As soon as they start minting the next season cards, they'd rather wait for the auction. Um, like, yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Trying to figure out when's the time to sell. But I, I did notice that Haaland's price has been taking a bit of a dip. And I feel like that might be anticipation for Man City. More supply. 
more supply. That's it. Yeah. And and having him, yeah. But I mean, he's still a useful card, but eight ETH is quite inflated, isn't it? Like in terms of a rare card. I mean, he, what's going to happen to he's, him back at the end of the season? He's, he's pretty bulletproof, Haaland, but isn't he for a U23 forwards? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, what's Haaland got? Another three seasons of utility for something like that, isn't he? So, for 2025. Yeah. He's, he's, he's going to be the best forward for U23. As soon as Mbappe is out of it, come this summer, Haaland's the next one that everyone's going to be looking at, right? Um, I can't think of who, who else is who else is sort of kicking about U23 forward wise. Vinny. So Vinny, it'd be Vinny Haaland. Who else have we got? Uh, how old's Gakpo if he kicks on? If he kicks on. Nunez. Is if game. Nunez and Gakpo kick on. is New, Actually, Nunez might be finished this season. Maybe no, Nunez is definitely not a pop. No, Armin oh, Nunez. Um, but I was actually just looking at that Haaland, uh, even the limited price man, but 0.84 or something, man. That's not too bad, especially like I'm even just thinking about this in the kind of wider so rare context. Like, I'm thinking about what uh, like a top basketball rare would go for, mm. and it's a bit like a Giannis or something. I know they are probably actually a little bit more expensive than that. But Haaland, in theory, is a top, especially at limited, what a top, definitely top five, but what we're saying, top three card in terms yeah. of prestige on the game. Limited scarcity as well, obviously, because he's only 370 limited in this Dortmund card um, or whatever. So I don't know, man. I think that's actually mildly appealing if you're like a limited whale, if you really like throw around in that division and you want to have the biggest and best cards every week. I don't think that's. Um, you know, because when a limited gets to like an ETH and stuff like that, which Haaland has been in the past, that's when it does get a bit spicy, doesn't it? Um, that's the thing. I think the problem with he has been quite regularly, you know, as well is like obviously 0.847 is probably a, feels about right, but the problem is you are probably competing against all 370 of those limiteds in the U23 division where he's most likely to, you know, get you're going to get the value out of him. I find like limited U23 is like one of the least appealing. Um, <laughs> like, it's like you're overpaying for the U23 utility, but it's still just as hard to win in that division as it is like even the all-star really. Cause I think a lot of, yeah. a lot of the big players still play that do play limited are looking at U23 as like, you know, that's where the best rewards are. Problem is if there's 370 people on the platform with Haaland and you're not one of them, the weekend that he scores three goals or something, you'd probably, you'd, what is it, like 200 rewards or something like that? 250 rewards? You, They're all going to teams with Haaland in it. If you haven't got him, you may yeah. have bother. I think like, I kind of learned that a little bit in limited. So for me, with my limiteds, I'm always looking firstly at underdog and specialists as my main entries these days, just because there's a little bit more, you know, anything can happen in that division versus like, Throwing a Haaland in and putting the big players in and U23 or you know I do. I think I do you're probably have... quite surprised how many Haalands end up in the specialist limited because you can win rares out of that. You know, yeah. and if you're going to be buying a point eight limited, you know, then <laughs> you want to be that. You want that to pull as much bank as possible, I guess, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the uh, the specialist. I think people have forgotten a bit, little bit about specialist and underdog since the new announcement. You know. I don't know if you've noticed. It's kind of because they got shelved through the World Cup. You know, it was, yeah. the specialist was international, so um, it's not really... Yeah, it kind of got put in the back burner and brought back from the dead as it was. I put a team into the specialist, just like I treated it like training this week, but I just I put a couple of... I had three players that had a game that could potentially score well, um, and I put them in a specialist team with like two people who had like DNP the last... So I, I could put any scores in of those three, basically two players who had like zero of those over the last fifteen. And I haven't looked at it now, but for ages yesterday, last night, that team was in the cards. I mean, it's only forty; it's forty fourth on one hundred and thirty eight points. So I felt like it's been overlooked a little bit. Um, I know, like this week was a weird one because we didn't have that many fixtures, but I do wonder if uh, people forgot. It was there. Looking at it now, actually saying that, I mean, Roxy is currently top of the leaderboard with a score of 356, which is obscene, really, for for specialist. Um, let's have a look who he's got in his team. Okay. 
Well, this is this is what you're up against in specialist. Roxy. The team was, or is, Donna Rummer, Melvin Bard, Mohamed Kamara, Dango Utara, and Lois Appender. Oof. It's like some of the biggest scoring cards in the game in their given sort of like locations. Uh, so yeah, Special I guess you are, that, yeah. you are always playing up against people like that. But for the most part, I find you see different names in the sort of in the cards in those divisions, don't you? But you go as far down as 43rd. So I'm actually only one place outside the cards on 138 points. I'm 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 point six six points out of the cards. That's not bad. And there's the 96% complete. So there's only 41 cards left to play. Um, so people must have forgotten about it. I mean, to be near the cards with a score like that, having only three players play is pretty mad, really. But I guess that's the thing with those midweeks, isn't it? If you could plan ahead for a game or a game week where we've only got a few fixtures, if you've got the right cards and the right bits are open, um, which is a nice segue into the next thing I wanted to mention. That is it game week 338, so not this week, the one after. There is no U23. Oh, yeah, I've seen a murmuring of this around. I've not, I don't know anything about it, Sasha. You'll be, you'll be clearing me up on this. I'm looking at it it now. Yeah, I heard a bit of a murmur about it, and I'm looking now on the on the blog. So game week three three eight, there is no U twenty three, which I don't really understand. Um, and also, there's no all star. That can't be right. There's so is that league. like a, is there only a single region open then? They've got challenger. Yeah, yeah, challenger. You're right. Specialists are open. Underdogs Celtic are open. Only. Challenger. Is it just Celtic? Wait, Celtic's what? in Berlin, maybe. That can't it can't be the only game though, can it? It's only Challenger open, there must be. We're not far there maybe like two Scottish games on or something. Lineup builder for that week. Coy, cool, you'll be cleaning up, Quinny. It'll be you between must... me and McGrades with the Battle of the yeah. XP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Battle of the XP. I'm gonna have a look now. So game week three three eight. Um if I go into wait. Why can't I do that? Game week three, three, eight. If I go into my lineup builder, All Star Rare Pro. Um, oh, hold on. No, there's there's Belgian games as well. So, oh, is that? There is. Oh, yeah. I've actually got a few players there. If there's Belgium as well, then I would think under twenty three should be open because that's two different leagues. There's, yeah, there's Belgium, know. and actually there's some Premier League fixtures as well. Because Man United play Crystal mm. Palace as well. That, that they do have some predetermined rules for this stuff, so. Um, I hope that they're following that kind of guidance because mm. people would have obviously planned again around fixtures around this. And after that kind of D2 debacle we had over the World Cup, you'd like to think that any previously stated rules regarding this haven't been conflicted, you'd hope. Yeah, I mean, I've just gone into like U23 Super Rare to see what what kind of options I'd have there. And there's actually a lot more players available for that than there is probably this week in my case. But... This week we only had like French. We had we had we had a just French, yeah, yeah, French or game. Italian. French game. Uh, did we have Italian as well? Yeah, I don't. There's been one French game week that was only Italian and one that's only French, and then I think there's one coming up at the end of the month that's only German. Unusual that we haven't got All Star open. I've never. I, don't I think, think we've had that season. before since Fre- see since thresholds came in. Whenever it did come in. There was a point in time where it was like only the K League on, and yeah. they didn't they didn't open All Star for it, and they set some rules out at that point regarding it. And uh, I say I don't remember the whole under, but I know it was something to do with All Star will be open if there's two regions open. I know that was part of it, and then I think maybe it is two regions rather than two leagues. But I would have thought with under twenty three, if it's at least two leagues, I get why All Star wouldn't be open if it's two leagues from the same region. Well, even for U23, if there's enough heads there, where it's the Belgian league, the Scottish league are there, then you think U23 maybe gets a look. But There's a lot of players covered. There's a, I don't remember know, the rules that well regarding this, you know. Yeah, the entire SPFL, the entire Belgian league, there's a lot of players covered. So it's weird. And also, like I so said, there's, there's Premier League fixtures as well. Um, trying to remember how is the quickest way. Okay, if I go into like game week centre, I can see all the fixtures. But it, it it's not it's not a particularly thin game week compared to some that we've seen. Um, yeah, there's three fixtures. There's enough fixtures. 
Um, yes, yeah, unusual that. Very unusual. Um, maybe they'll make a change, but I hadn't seen too much noise about. I saw that there was no U23. I think McBride was talking about it somewhere. Um, I'm surprised we got two full divisions there, um, and and a and a Premier League fixture. So maybe something changes. I've just noticed. I think I've got no training team set for this weekend. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. I don't know if they've had a reset on it, so maybe it's that just me. Maybe a couple take, of weeks back as well. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, did it? I heard it happening to other people, and I thought, oh, good, that's not happened to me, but maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> just caught up. Yeah, it happened to me two weeks ago, and it spent, you know, about an hour, just like... I think the thing with... If you do it on basketball, it's much quicker to enter your training teams, isn't it? You just go bang, 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 just like... Positions and that, and also like that. Well, that graphic doesn't open up the same way, but there's got to be. I think they could. They got to make a quicker way of doing. It. I still think like, all right, don't make it so easy that everyone's automatically goes in because you know, like, benefit for people who don't forget to do it to get the XP in that. But um, yeah, it's uh, I've got to make it quicker. Got to make it quicker for me. I but, definitely um, agree. How are you looking for this game where you said that Celtic aren't about, so you've got to no. wait till midweek? How, how I've, got, I've got a ticket for the semi-final, but um, through a spare ticket going, uh, thanks to the guys over at the Celtics Are Here uh, YouTube channel. If he's wanting to check out Celtic content, that's where all my kind of stuff kind of goes this direction now. So be sure to check that out. But I'm going to the game, so I'm quite excited for that. The actual game week itself, but I've not got that many teams uh, to roll out. I won't go through lineup builders and all that kind of and stuff with everyone on the podcast today but i'm getting like four teams out five teams out that don't include road to glory or you know like common draft stuff and all that kind of caper and out of those four teams like yeah i think two of them i've definitely got the chances of being in amongst prizes maybe three of them if i'm super lucky so like the amount of teams entered is down but it's kind of congregated all my non-celtic players together which i still got like three-ish good teams worth of players for you know um so yeah so kind of hopeful yeah i've i've got quite a lot of teams out but i'm there's i'm similarly there's a couple of really good players that i just have been out for the last few weeks or i can't find clear-cut information on whether or not they're going to play so a couple of my super rares that i'm really hoping i can use uh al hassan yusuf at uh at antwerp um there's very little news about where or when he's coming back what's up with him all they said was like at the very be at the very end of last year if you like in december they said he won't be back until the new year and it's like what, what part of the new year <laughs> like i don't know if this is just like some kind of ploy to like because he was attracting attention from premier league clubs apparently and i wonder if they're just trying to like hide him from people's view at the moment it's a bit of an unusual Thing. Either that, or they're trying to keep him fresh so that they can sell him. I don't know, but um, he was such a good, useful player for me in U23 and in Challenger. And I've got some, I've got some quite good fixture matchups. So U23 is looking quite strong. I've got a U23 D2 entry that might actually be of use for the first time in a few weeks because uh, Gaetan Cook has been out with illness, but his manager's come out and said that he will be back in this weekend. Um, and he was on the bench in their cup game yesterday. So I know he's he's fit again. And they said he'll be back. So when I saw that, I thought, great, well, I can look at D2. So I've got a D2 entry. I'm still targeting U23 Pro this weekend, I think. Um, yes. Yeah, I think I've, I've got uh, Veerman, Vandervoort, um, Foremost Mendy. Uh, the only weak spot in that team is um, I've got Ole Romani up front, super rare. Um, he's not the worst forward. That's, I'm in that point again. I'm in that same predicament that like none of my U23 forwards are really firing at the minute. Uh, I think that it might be that might be not just me. I feel like a lot of U23 players might be feeling that unless you've got like a Haaland or something like that because it's hard for me to see a U23 forward who's really like on fire at the moment. I can't think. No one really springs to mind when I think of one, unless you look at Haaland. So maybe it's not so bad that I haven't got one. Maybe everyone's in a similar boat to me. But um, It's definitely yeah. been the year of like the streaky under-23 hit players, isn't it? You know, definitely. like some guys just catch a bit of form and they're doing pretty well for a few weeks and then they're benched or they're not that good or they're injured or 
whatever. But yeah, they're, they're, I'm not saying I spring to mind. Like I was talking on the, the member stream last night. I was going through like <clears throat> this time in 2021, so like two Januaries ago, I I was so bullish on so rare and like at the time I think there's maybe let's say under five thousand users and we'd had a bit of an Ethereum bull run and I was thinking to myself like I want to get as many hard hitting under twenty three super rare forwards that I possibly can while like my wallet is very heavy in the sense of the value of the ETH and yeah. players on auction. Not that many people here by my bullish perspective compared to what there will be in the future kind of thing. Yeah. And I made a list, and I, re- I could remember most of it really quickly off the top of my head, like Stengs, Boadu, Darwin Nunes, Noah Lang, Jordan Larson, Lucas Nemeka, and I think there might have been another player. And I went after all of those super rares. I got like three of them. I got Nemeka, Larson, and Nunes. I didn't get Lang. Hendo got Stengs. Boadu went a wee, bit, a wee bit over budget for me. And I'm sure there was another forward. But anyway, I tried to get all those guys, as many of them as I could, over like a two or three month period. And I think if you were to go and make that list today, it would be much less exciting. Uh, don't get me wrong, Noah Lang's in that list and Boadu yeah. and hardly pulled up trees and all the rest of it, right? But that's a fun list. And at the time, all those guys were certified killers. And under 23, when Stengs and Boadu were at AZ, Larson was at Moscow, Nunes at Benfica, Nemeka at Anderlecht, you know, yeah. like people forget that. He was really good there. Um, but see, if you went across now, I don't know if you'd quite get the same quality of list on current form and prospects. I'm, I'm, while we've been talking now, I've just been thinking, and I think that like there's two ends of the spectrum. You've got like the surefire, which is the vert, the verts forward cards, which is very scarce now because they've started minting him as a midfielder again. Uh, Jamal Musiala is a forward, and then you've got obviously Mbappe, um, who he ages out in. In, in the summer. But yeah, like Verts, who we're <coughs> getting because he's not got fixtures at the minute. And the same with Musiala, really. But those two are probably like, those two are probably like the prime forward cards for U23. But, you know, you're looking at, for a super rare of those, you're probably looking at 15, 20 ETH, like something ridiculous if they come into the market again. But um, their rare cards are what, three ETH, four ETH? It's yeah, uh, thereabouts. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I pressed the mute button there so I could have a wee cough, and then I actually realised as I was coughing that I muted you. <laughs> <laughs> so if everyone just heard me clearing my throat, I'm really sorry there. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Cool. Didn't mean it. But no, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much the the tail of the tape in terms of like the elite ones. Obviously, Gakpo and Liverpool. Who knows what's going to happen there? Yeah. Vinny at Real Madrid, we mentioned, and Rodrigo at Real Madrid. He's making noises of wanting to leave. There's Fatty at Barca. Maybe he becomes something as well. And uh, this post Messi Barca kind of either um, now the pies maybe moving on. Few other pieces yeah. are happening there, but yeah, I don't think there's that litany of talent across Belgium, Portugal, Russia. You know, here, there, and everywhere. Where there's like, oh, lots of these guys, Holland. None of those like nailed on ones, isn't it? Like that's they're all just bubbling up, you know. Yeah, because I saw that Casper Tengstedt, who is one of the top scoring forwards, he's just moved to Benfica. That could be that's the leap. That's an that, elite move, man. Yeah. But I think he ages out in the summer as well. So does he? Oh, he's twenty two now. He might he might have another year actually. He might have another year left. But that could be a good one. Um yeah, he definitely would make those out again in the summer. There's there's yeah, there's not a great deal. It's quite slim pickings unless you've got an Mbappe this weekend, I think. Um he's back, he's expected back this weekend, isn't he? I think him and Hakimi are coming back from their New York trip. Straight back into this thing. <laughs> Did you see all the pictures of them like watching the breakdown? I did. <laughs> I seen um, Mookie Ellie get two assists for uh, yeah, PSG, yeah. My, my, my little backup guy that I was hoping would come good. So I really hope that Hakimi does. Uh, obviously, Hakimi is going to come in at right mid, right wing back, but I really hope Mookie Ellie is nailed on that spot. You know, it's probably preferred to go to Sergio Ramos, right centre back of the back five. Yeah, yeah. But really I hope Mookie Ellie's well. one on form, man, you know, because he is the, you know, Maybe you give Sergio Ramos like the Champions League games and maybe some of the bigger league matches around Champions yeah. League games to keep him active. But mukiele has got to be so yeah. I hope to see them come back and I hope that right that right hand side, Hakimi and Mukiele is gonna be Yeah. It's gonna be helping me out in some SO five action anyway. PSG have got so much going on at the moment, it's hard to pick them up. But, um yeah, I'm 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 quite excited to see. I think like PSV were quite Lackluster last week, shall we say? And 
be interesting to see who fills Cody back Gakpo's shoes. I'm expecting it to be like um, Madueke or Bakayoko. Um, they've got some options there. They'll be interesting to see. Like one of those comes through, like Gakpo did. But I think Madueke is probably because he's English as well. There's probably a lot of English clubs looking at him. Like you kind of like the the lower the lower end of the Premier League who are like known to pick up the the quick the young talent maybe like a Southampton or something like that pick him up. Um, I don't know if he's going to get like that run of games that like maybe Gakpo had at PSV where he gets a couple of seasons to um, really like let loose. But um, yeah, you hope so. There's going to be a lot of movement. I'm sure there'll be more movement before the end of this month as well. So it's going to be keeping an eye on it all. But Javi Simons probably stands to benefit from it as well. You know, Absolutely, like increased. Yeah increased you know like room for him to to shine with I'm as waiting for a, on set pieces and such you know i'm waiting for a, Ch a chavi simons forward card that is that's what i want i really want that i think a javi simons forward card would be the best card i could get because i've got veerman sangare obispo like i could really on a week band. PSV, i'll fire in yeah i could go there or i could go uh conse south ajax if like you know, they've got Brobby, they've got, oh, they've he got went like there. injuries at the minute, but if he kicks on with Wrench and I've got that, the Kenneth Taylor super rare, that could be a nice attacking uh, attacking triangle to add to the team. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep sure. an eye on it. It's annoying because I've got a lot of U23 forwards, just none that are really, you know, until Jesus Ferreira comes back in to the mix, I'm kind of stuck hoping for a goal, but... Yeah, I think uh, Jorgen Larsson looks like he's losing his place at Celta Vigo a bit. He's been finding finding himself on the bench the last few games. Yeah, recent change of manager. It's always a kick in the buzz for um, a young player like that getting minutes and stuff. There is a few, like, I, I've spoke before, like, I'm quite excited about Samuel Lino. Um, he's kind of difficult to get on story because he is, he's, he's too expensive, I think, for what he is and mm -hmm. where he's at this season. And I don't think his immediate prospects are that better. He's an Atletico Madrid player on loan. At Valencia, you know, but he's Brazilian, twenty-two, looks really good. Not doing that much, but um, but again, I think there is some exciting, exciting guys going around. But again, some of these, like Samuel Lino is twenty-two. You know, there's not that many guys that are like at the bottom end of that U twenty-three scale, like really pushing through. Like um, I know some of the guys I mentioned earlier were like twenty-two or so, twenty-one also, but. A lot of them were nailed on starters at the time. The real, like Noah Lang, when he burst onto the scene at Bruges, was the main guy rocking yeah. every week. He was untouchable for months, you know. Um, and that's the status that those guys got to. Gakpo done that this season. Obviously, he's had the, the, the champion move in the, this transfer window. But yeah, Tengstead, and I, I don't think we've had enough exposure to Tengstead because I think since he's had cards, I don't know how many SO5 games he's actually played. You know, it's not that many, I don't think, if any. Um so we've, our experience for him has been a bit different, but I definitely think on paper he would fall into that category alongside Gakpo. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I do think, like, like you're saying there, like in the, 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 as the season stands now, guys like Jorgen Larsen, when you know they're going to start and you're just hoping then they get some decisives, there that, that's the plays that you kind of need to take, I think, unless you know about somebody that's just about to get their chance and about to break through, or you've got Jota or Abada or something. Let's hope Laurent Blanc gives uh, Cherky the, the, the game time that we've all been waiting for. And That's hopefully we'll come good there. Uh, yeah. I mean, his recent price activity suggests people are feeling like it's his time. Cherky time. Cherky time. I, I definitely got in at, at the right time. I think I hit like the, the kind of like bottom of his recent range. So got the got the rookie, the classic 15-year-old. Oh, nice. Actually, nice. Quinny, it was yours once. I know. No way, I was going to ask. Is it? Oh, yeah. Mate, I, I looked at it. I was like, I've got your old Cherokee card. Brilliant. Love that, man. Yeah, I picked it up. And then I realised that you were an owner of it many, many moons ago. Many moons ago. I want to go and I'm definitely going to check that out now, Stash, because yeah. I want to see. If I go to like, my club. I think I maybe got a prize with him once. <laughs> go and see if he won anything decent. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. He's, he was, there's so many previous owners of him. Like, Oh, is that? Has he been passed about? I was hoping that would be It looks like he's stuff. been loaned between a couple of accounts multiple times. And then you had him. And then Super Usman had him. And then uh, Rod, I got him from Roddy mm. Boss. Nice. I think I paid like, well, it's like 515 for him or something like that. I thought it was good for a, for a proper rookie, yeah. you know. Aye, that is a proper player. rookie. That's a perfect one. 15-year-old forward card. That's it. Love that. And he's won me one bit of ETH 
Oh, that's good. That's good. So there's a wee it's... record there of the first owner, then me, and then Roddy Boss won a bit of EFA with him as well. Oh, he's a, a journeyman. He's only Never 19 seven. and he's already Good had guy. some career there, lad. <laughs> some cards, mate. Buzzing, you've got that. That's quality. Yeah, I just need to start winning for me now and then we could be happy. He can he can, he can, uh, he can retire at Club Tropicana Drinks FC as a, as a club legend. For sure, man. Better luck. But uh, I think... I think that about wraps everything up, Quinny. Uh, I can't think of anything else that we needed to cover. We got through all of the new game modes and everything and spoke about the transfer market as per usual. But uh, good luck for the week, the weekend. Um, and and most importantly, good luck. Next time we speak, you'll probably be um, up to your neck in rewards with Celtic. Uh, in but the weeks, week. yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so, man. Good luck yeah, to you as well, mate. You, mate. Good luck with the under 23 D2. Yeah, um, hopefully it comes good for me. I'm, I'm due a super rare reward at some point too, no doubt. But hopefully it can be this weekend. Uh, everyone listening, uh, thanks for your ears. Please, please do uh, share, re- respond, uh, repost, whatever. Get those comments in. And uh, we'll be back again, same time next week. Big up, everyone. Cheers.